says, set me, here we are, where it's part of white men's place, loading up boats with the bales of cotton, gates, no less, till it turns midday. If you tell my friend who gave a lovely baby, put the apple on your eye, oh, that's all my life, I'm telling me, the only thing is better than a chicken pie. Here we are, where it's part of the midst, here's set me, here we are, where it's part of white folks' place, loading up boats with the bales of cotton. and jolly comedies, Stephen Baker, the handsomest leading man, and beautiful Julie Laverne, as well. Captain Dawson, Captain Dawson, Captain and his floating show, thrills and laughter, concert after, everybody's sure to go. If my boat goes upstream Or if the gale bids me go With the river's flow I drift along with my fancy Sometimes I thank my lucky stars My heart is free Other times I wonder, where's the mate for me? Hello. How do you do? Are you an actress? Oh, no, but, but I'd give anything if I could be. Why? Well, because you can make believe so many wonderful things that never happen in real life. Well, if you'd like to make believe one thing, why can't we make believe we know each other? The game of just supposing is the sweetest game I know. Our dreams are more romantic than the world we see. And if the things we dream about don't happen to be so, it's just an unimportant technicality. So the cold and brutal fact is, you and I have never met. We need not mind conventions, and cues. If we put out a thought And vanish all regret. Imagining most anything we choose. 
good night. Good night. See you again. Ain't ever what a girl supposes. Stage door Johnny's aren't raging over you with gems and roses. When you let a feller hold your hand, which means an extra beer or sandwich, everybody whispers, Ain't her life a world? Though you're Warned against a rue, ruining your reputation. When you played around a one night trade around the great ignition, wild old men who give you jewels and sables only live in Aesop's fables. Life upon the wicked stage ain't nothing for a girl. Can't help 
loving that man of mine. Well, show, Mr. Kine. Well, thank you, Joe. Where to? To Waldorf, Mr. Kine? Uh, what was that, Joe? 
That big shindig you threw in for you. It's down at the Waldorf, eh, Mr. Kine? Yes. Uh, but first, I'd like to stop off at the house of an old friend. Yes, sir. Uh, just for a moment, Chum. Turn right at the next crossing. It's not very far. I'm looking for an old brownstone house. It was the home of a very great and good friend. Tonight, during the show, I couldn't seem to get him off my mind. Yes, sir. And I'd like to be alone for a few minutes, Joe, before we go down to the Waldorf and face that crowd. Oh, I get you. It's like, uh, like a minute of silence, something like that, huh? Yes, Joe, something like that. Uh, here, uh, stop here, Joe. Here at the corner? Uh, in front of that radio shop. <clears throat> oh, there it is. See? You, you mean that, that lodging house sandwich in there? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it didn't have that room to let sign in the window then. And other than that, it hasn't changed very much. Well, the street has changed. Changed quite a bit since I first walked down it years ago. Joe, uh, did you notice this radio shop? Well, that was a bicycle shop the first time I ever saw it. I remember the day very well. It was spring, and I might have been any American kid coming down that street. I had a song under my arm, my hopes were high, and the world was wonderful. I was ambitious, and I was eager, but I needed a little help. I'd been told that the best man to give it to me was a man by the name of Hessler. James Hessler. Come in. You're an hour late already. I suppose you realize that. You can start on the upstairs bedroom immediately. Mrs. Muller, Daddy wants some more roast beef. I'll be there in a second, Mr. Hessler, and see that you get to their nest, young man. He's not the moth killer. I'm a songwriter. A songwriter? I see. You entered under false pretenses. Well, it won't do you any good, young man. Mr. Hessler isn't seeing songwriters anymore. He's going in for better things. Maybe he should have some roast beef. He's very hungry. Roast beef in front of a songwriter. No, so it is, so it is. You feel like you're gonna fall down the don't you? Dear, dear. Well, you can come in for a while. I can't have people fainting in the house, not even songwriters. Thank you. Come in, come in. Daddy, he's starving to death. Oh, Mr. Hessler. Uh, Mr. Max. Yes, yes, I know. Well, Mr. Max Dreyfus of the Harms Company sent you. Written a little tune. He thinks it has possibilities if it's properly arranged. Time to help you arrange it. Look how skinny his neck is, Daddy. Why, he said that uh, he told you that I was the greatest arranger in America, and I should give you a few lessons. Huh? Well, my friend, he's right. There's only one catch. I've given up arranging. I'm through dressing up silly little tunes for girl shows and beer halls. I'm going to write some real music for a change. Oh, here, Mrs. Uh, 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 set it down here. The trouble with you songwriters is all you ever think about is making money. Here, sit down and have some roast beef. Oh, well, no, thank you. Go ahead, sit down, sit down. No, you never think of doing anything big, anything worthwhile, like Brahms or Peach... Uh, oh, no, uh... No, don't, don't sit down there, please. It's Mrs. Hessler's place, Rester, so we always keep it set for Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sit down here. No, all you fellas want to do is write sugary little tunes and make a lot of money. Did you ever hear Beethoven's Eroica? Or Mozart's Jupiter? Then they do something to you? Great heavens, doesn't genius touch you fellas at all? Daddy's a genius. <laughs> yes, Daddy's a genius. Now, my friend, in three weeks I'm going to England where I can work and have some peace and quiet. No mushy little melodies to be fancied up for public consumption. I'm going to write a symphony. Daddy's going to write an opera just for me. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, eat up. Maybe we'll give you some gumption. Well, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Hessler. I had a big lunch with Mr. Dreyfus just before I left. <laughs> it was roast beef, too. Yeah, well, I... Oh, what's the matter? Just because you're not hungry, you don't have to go, do you? Have some brandy with me. Help me celebrate my liberation from mediocrity. Uh, Mrs., uh, 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 get a couple of liqueur glasses, will you? Sally, will you show Mr. The, the gentleman into the parlor? I'm going upstairs and see if I can't find that bottle of Napoleon. Have you a song in there? Mm-hmm. 
I'm taking piano lessons. Daddy wants me to be an opera singer when I grow up. Why don't you write an opera? Well, Sally, I'm afraid I only write the silly little tunes. Uh, you know, the ones your father doesn't like. Let me see if I can play your song. Do you mind? Oh, I wish you would. It's very easy. Here. Kala, Kala, Kala. What's the name of the song? Kalua. That's a funny name. Sounds like candy, like gumdrops. Well, it's the name of a very romantic beach in Hawaii, Sally. Uh, no, that's B. B natural. Here, let me show you. Played with clarinets. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. No, that's not right. You've got to use clarinets to play the vamp. Oh, I was uh, thinking of using brass there. Brass and spoil your finish? Good heavens, man. You've always got to save the brass for the finish. Oh. Well, what do you think? Think? I know. This is a romantic song. Sit down. It's sentimental. You've got to start the melody off with your strings. Devisa, here, I'll show you. Start that vamp again, Sally. It's perfect for clarinet, see? Now then, the strings enter. Devisa. Did you hear how wonderful that is? Now then, add trombones. Muted trombones. No, 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 wait a minute. We ought to add flutes there. Right, easy. Not easy. <laughs> it's a good song too. It's very good. Is that yours? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's all right. What's your name again? Kern. Jerome Kern. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Kern. <laughs> Make yourself at home. And I did. My life became a pattern of notes and clefts, tempos and modulations. We worked hour after hour, day after day. It was the beginning of a friendship. It was the beginning of a lot of things. And now, not only did I have a best friend, I had a best girl, Sally. And what a girl. Oh, those were never to be forgotten days. And I hated to think of them ending. But at last, the time came when Jim had to leave for England. Oh, here, Jim, let me help you. Oh, it's those, it's those symphonies of yours. They're as heavy and bulky as lead. Nice, they're not tinny like some tunes I've heard. Oh, Sally, honey, come here. All right, here we go. Fortissimo. Dum da da dum da dum. Fun. Uh, Got it. Oh, you carry a lot of weight, Sally. It was easy. Come along, Sally. At least we're not going to miss the boat. Goodbye, Mr. Kerr. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye, Sally. Bon voyage. What does that mean? Happy journey. Bye, Uncle Jerry. Be a good boy. This will be the end of it, boys. Don't forget to pack my song, Daddy. No, no. I'm good. <laughs> she means Kahlua. All that is her song, Jim. You know, if it hadn't been for Sally, I wouldn't be here now. Well, she's very fond of you, Jerry. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss all of you. Well, you may not be gone so long. It all depends on... <laughs> you won't mind living here alone, will you? Oh, no. No, I'll get used to it. Uh, Jim, in case I don't get a chance at the boat, I just wanted to tell you that... Uh... Oh, forget it. 
I... I like arranging now that I'm through with it. I'm glad to have been some help. No, it's more than that. It's been your kindness and your home here. Look, Jerry, I just want you to write some good music, some real music. That's all the thanks I want. Don't, don't waste your time fussing with those wheezy little tunes. Think big. Try to be somebody. I will, Jim. I'll try to be as big as I can. Yeah, good. It's fine. Well, we better be on our way. Oh, good heavens, Sally Sloan. Uh -huh. You know, I'm so tickled that she remembered that. Remembered? It's your song, Jerry. She couldn't do that. I stood there watching that boat pull out of the harbor, and I was lonelier than I'd ever been in my life. I walked through the days that followed, from office to office, theater to theater, always getting the same discouraging answer. The big hits were all English or European, and the uh, <clears throat> local talent just didn't seem to have a chance. Broadway was closed to an American. From 23rd Street to Times Square, they were all playing Follow the Leader. And the leader was Charles Trump. At the moment, he's with Keller. Cecil Keller, the English composer. Mr. Froman's not interested in American songs at the moment. He's leaving for England in a few weeks. Good day. Uh, how do you do? My name is Kern, Jerome Kern. Oh, yes, how do you do, sir? I see you have the deeds with you. Mr. Froman's very anxious to see them. Deeds? You're the man from the real estate office, aren't you? No, I'm a songwriter. Uh, these are some of my songs. Your name isn't Kernan? No, Kern, Jerome Kern. I'm sorry, Mr. Froman hasn't a minute to waste. I'm afraid I must say good day. Well, now, maybe if he'd listen to one of my songs, I have one that could be made very English. Good day, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Froman. Goodbye, Mr. Keller. I'll see you in London soon. I'll call you when I get there. Thank you. I'll be waiting for your call. I made up my mind that I was going to try to write music with an English accent. So I sailed for London. I wish I could say with flags flying and my courage high. But the sea and I and the boat uh, didn't get along too well together. I was mighty glad to see land again. Excuse me, uh, could you tell me where Mr. Hessler lives? Hessler? We have a Wesley and we have a Smith. No, Hessler. Uh, Mr. Jim Hessler. Uncle Jerry! Sally! Oh, honey, it's so good to see you. We didn't know you were coming. Well, I didn't know I was myself. Daddy will be so glad to see you. Come on, we live right over there. All right. Oh, Sally, you're getting prettier every day. I have a Well, the tables are turned. American songwriter invades England. <laughs> That's pretty good, Jerry. Well, it's daring, very original. You're thinking big anyway. It's a chance I'm taking, Jim. Mm. So you've gotten a little skinnier, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I haven't been getting enough roast beef lately, I guess. <laughs> Jerry, I, I look at you sitting there, and it's just hard for me to believe you haven't been here all the time. Thanks, Jim. It's, uh, sort of like being home again. How was the, uh, symphony coming along? All right? Oh, well, uh, yes, I'm... I'm still in the note-making stages. Uh, of course, I always believe in making plenty of notes. It's, uh... It's kind of like, uh, planting seed. One day they start to grow, and then... Before you know it, lo and behold, your symphony's all written. Uh-huh. Simple and easy, hmm? Not as difficult as writing those silly little tunes. Well, no, it's it's the quiet here that does it, Jerry. Peace in this place is just so thick that you can float on it. There's a it's a rustic pastoral. Uh, wait a minute, I'll answer that telephone. Uh oh, the doorbell. Will you get the uh, door, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a there's a picturesque pastoral. Hello. 
Who? Sometimes they're on the duckwork. My little girl, she's waiting for her piano oh, lessons. Oh, Mr. Edwards. Oh. Yeah, put him on. Come, Sally, it's time for Hello, you. George. When my little son is Fine. Fine. I don't want to. Tomorrow? Be glad to. I'm not going to have a lesson. For dinner, good. Hester, you behave yourself. All right, I'll be there. Bye-bye. George Edwards. The producer? Yes, he wants me to come up and sit in on a rehearsal of a new show. I don't want to take that piano lesson. Uncle Jerry's here. You've got to talk to your daughter. I can't do a thing with her anymore. Well... This is Uncle Jerry's first day here, and I shouldn't be made to take lessons. Should I? Should I, Uncle Jerry? Well, I, I think you should have one day off, maybe, huh? That's the end of her. There was some hope for her until her Uncle Jerry arrived. Now she's spoiled for good and all. <laughs> Come, we get ourselves a cup of tea. You know, Sally, I'm inclined to agree with you. I think Uncle Jerry's arrival does call for a celebration. Now, what'll it be? London or the fair? Oh, the fair, Daddy. Please, the fair. All right. <laughs> the fair it is. <laughs> Could be wonderful. Oh, no, no, Jerry. I don't want Sally to go up in the swings. Not until she's a little older. The whole stage full of swings and a boy and girl in each swing and all of them singing. Oh, oh you, you mean for a production number? Yeah. yeah. That's not a bad idea. They could swing from the stage right out over the audience and back again. Make a good production number. What, uh, what song would you use with it? Spoon with me? Be perfect. Spoon with me, Ed. Yeah. That sounds fine. Suppose I take that up to George Edwards. For the gaiety? Sure. I'm gonna have dinner with him tomorrow night. Oh, Jim. I don't know why. I am so very shy. I always was demure. I never knew what silly lovers do. No flirting I didn't do. In all my life, I never kissed a man. I never winked my eye. But now at last, I'm going to break the ice. So how would you like to try? How would you like to spoon with me? I like to. How would you like to spoon with me? Well, Rob. Sit beneath an oak tree, large and shiny. Call me little tootsie, would say baby. How would you like to walk and squeeze? Indeed I would. Dangle me upon your knee. How'd you like to be 
to me as the composer of that delightful number with the swings in it. My name is Froman, Charles Froman. Mr. Kern, I want to congratulate you. Froman? I'm sorry, sir. It, it isn't my number. My name isn't Kern. There's Mr. Kern, sir. Down the bar bit. That gentleman there? Why, he can't be the composer. It's him, sir. Sipping sherry. And a very nice gentleman he is, too, sir. Not a musician. Mr. Froman, I have something here which I know you'd like. It's a beautiful number with parasols, with all sorts of parasols. Mr. Kern? Oh, Mr. Froman, how do you do? I'm very glad to know you. Mr. Kern, I want to tell you I think your swing number is delightful. It has such beautiful English charm to it, really delightful. Oh, by Jove, Mr. Froman, that's, that's rather nice of you. It's a pleasure to know you, Mr. Kerr. You know, you fellas over here have a style all your own. As English as the scent of the May Blossoms. Would you join me in a glass of sherry? Uh, Righto. Miss. song at the Gaiety, I think you can afford to take a rest. Well, if I could finish it, I know I could interest Froman in it. <laughs> you ought to know by now that Charles Froman is only interested in English music and English composers. If I only had a piano, I know I could work this out right now. Flat. Well, it looks like you do have a little work to do. That town we passed wasn't very far back, was it? No, not very. Well, let me take your bike, and I'll go back and see if I can buy a repair kit. No, I think I'd better go. I can talk with the uh, natives better than you can. Well, let me do it. I can use my accent on them. That's just what I was afraid of. No, you wait here and whistle yourself a little tune till I come back. Uh, make sure you can find this place again. I'll find it. Say, is anyone there? Did Mr. Temkin send you? Well, um, I was passing by on my bike and I got a flat tire. And, uh, oh, well, then you don't work for Mr. Timkins. No. No, I happened to notice your piano through the window, so I thought I'd come in and try out a little tune. <laughs> I see. For a minute, I thought you were the piano tuner. No. Well, I'd better go before the owners. What do you do here, gardening? A little. Oh. Well, I don't know whether anybody's told you, but for a working girl, you're very pretty. Thank you. You're an American, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I'm a songwriter. Uh, as a matter of fact, that song I was playing as you came in was mine. Do you like it? Oh, uh, you wrote it yourself. Sure. Oh, I write lots of songs. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you've heard this one. Why, 
Why, that's from the Gaieties. Everybody's singing it. Uh-huh. Now, this is the one I was working on. That I'm going to try to place for the Gaiety, too. Of course. I would if I were you. Don't you believe I wrote these songs? Tell me, when you compose, do you always break into people's houses to borrow their pianos? No. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, if I place this with the gaiety, I'll send you tickets and you can come and see for yourself. Will you? I'll tell you when I get the tickets. Oh, I beg your pardon, miss, but uh, your mother would like to speak to you. She's in the upstairs sitting room. Thank you, Katie. I'll be right up. <clears throat> well, I'm uh, <laughs> terribly sorry. But I still wrote those songs. And I'll still be waiting for the tickets. Will you? Wonderful. I, I, I won't forget. who wasn't going to fall in love with anybody for a long, long time. Well, this girl is different. <laughs> sure, I know. Well, now, don't joke about it. It's serious. <laughs> don't you believe me? Yes, of course I believe uh, She really is different. I know, I know. Her hair is like spun gold shining in the sunlight. Well, I don't know about her hair. She had a kerchief on, but her eyes... Her eyes were, were like pools in the starlight. I see. Even with her working clothes on, she's the prettiest girl I've ever seen. I'm sure of it. Seriously, Jim, don't you believe me? Yes, yes, I believe you. It's spring, isn't it? And tomorrow morning, I think I'm going to give you a great big dose of sulfur and molasses. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> you I can't seem to see anything else oh writing songs again perhaps we'd better stop and have lunch all right you can move in under those trees there <sighs> isn't it a beautiful day beautiful 
Now, let's see. You've seen Westminster Abbey and the Tower of London, and you've seen Buckingham Palace and Hampton Court. Maybe there's something I can tell you about this place. Eva, uh, let's uh, drop the history course for a while. Do you mind? Not that it isn't interesting, but, uh, well, there are a few things I'd like to know about you, too. Well, all right. What would you like to know about me? Oh, just the ordinary things. Things you like and things you don't like. And where you went to school and who was your first beau and oh, what you want out of life. Mm, that's a tall order. Where shall I start? Uh, the things you like. Oh, I, I guess I like what everyone likes. I like books and, uh, and picnics and dancing and music. What about musicians? Oh, certainly musicians. And what do you want out of life? Oh, I guess again what everyone wants. Happiness. Have you ever given any thought to uh, getting married? Why, of course. Doesn't everyone? Are you set on any particular type of man? Mm, I have been at different times. When I was 16, I desperately wanted to marry the star cricket player at rugby. And now? Now? Oh, uh, now I don't really know. Except that he must have a sense of humor. And he must be kind. And he must be intelligent and good company. And of course, he must love me very much. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I know somebody with at least one of those characteristics. Someday I'll tell you all about it. Oh, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. And how have you been this afternoon? Well, I'll tell you how I've oh, been. That's I've been so looking Never all... mind, never mind. You feel wonderful, you feel great. How could you be otherwise after such a beautiful day? Uh, tell me, my friend, how is your knowledge of English history? English history? Did you know that London happens to be the largest city in the world? Yes, I know that. Did you know that within the county of London there are 14 road bridges that cross the Thames? Now there's the Waterloo. There's you don't the say. Sounds dull, huh? Well, it's far from dull, my friend, when your history teacher is as beautiful as all the sirens of history put together. Did you know that all the swans on the Thames belong to the King of England? No, fancy that. And the male swan is called a cob. Well, what does that get? And did you know that when you walk into Hampton Court, you're walking right straight into history? Oh, my dear friend, you have so many things to learn about England. Have you ever heard of a man named Charles Froman? Froman? Froman, well, now that's a familiar name. The face escapes me. How can you talk about Froman when I'm talking about love? That's been the theme of this little dissertation. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you informed me. Oh, that's all right. Because the next time Froman's office calls, yeah. I'll tell him that you're too busy to be bothered. Yes, you tell him that I'm too busy. Did you say the next time Froman's office calls? That's what I said. They've been calling you all day. But why should I bore you with such trivial details? Well, what do they want? No, no, dear friend, you return to your archives. Why think of the future when the past is so glorious? Oh, come on, now, quit clowning. What happened? Mm, nothing, nothing. Froman just wants you to write four songs for his new show. If, of course, you can uh, spare the time. Well, why didn't you tell me about it? Why didn't I tell you about it? Well, come on, let's get going. There's no time. We've got to do that on the ship. On the what? On the ship. We're sailing with Charles Froman tomorrow. We have to start rehearsal in six weeks in New York. Oh, Jim, I, I, uh... Oh, no. Look, Jerry, this is the chance you've been waiting for. Well, you certainly are full of surprises. I thought you'd be up in the clouds. I feel like I've just been yanked out of the clouds. Jerry, aren't you coming down for lunch? Oh, uh... No, no, Jim, I'm not very hungry. Now, look, you've got to snap out of this. It isn't the end of the world, it's the beginning. Here you are on your way back home with a Charles Froman contract in your pocket. Why, you ought to feel wonderful. <laughs> I know it. That's what I keep telling myself. You go back to England. If I just could have seen her once more. Jerry, it was all we could do to catch the boat. You couldn't help that. You talked to her on the phone. On the phone? What can you say on the phone? Hello? It's nice seeing you. Take care of yourself. Oh, Jim, there were so many things that I wanted to say to her. Now, look, Jerry, you've got to think about your career. Things are just starting for you. Yeah. You can say that over and over again, and you know what happens? What? Nothing. Jim, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm lonely. 
Here I am on a ship full of people, and with you, and I might as well be on a desert island all by myself. Did you ever feel this way? Yes, once. What did you do about it? I married the girl. Oh, hello, Mr. Froman. Hello there. Been looking for you, too. You weren't down to breakfast? Uh, no, I, uh, the first day out is always a little rough on <laughs> Good Englishman should have his sea legs by now. Come and have lunch with me. Uh, Mr. Froman, uh, there's something I must tell you. I'm not an Englishman. Mr. Kern, there's something I must tell you. I never thought that you were. At least not after the first 15 minutes. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm very proud to be able to present a new American composer to Broadway. Thank you, Mr. Froman. I have a lot of faith in you, Jerry. Just received a wireless from Julia Sanderson. She's accepted the part of the girl from Utah. Wonderful. Now I've got to have a great song for her. It's a love song. He's got one. When I told them how wonderful you are, they didn't I never realized that writing a complete score was such a job before. Well, one good all-night session like this does wonders. We could use another week. <laughs> we weren't three weeks late already. Oh, I hope he likes it, Tim. Rowan, he'd be crazy about it. If he hasn't gone out and bought himself another show while he's been waiting. Good morning. Sally, what are you doing up? It isn't morning already. No, it can't be. Sally, you'll be late for school. I'm coming. Say, Jim, don't you think I'd better call Froman's secretary and get an appointment? Yeah, you better call him at home. It's a little early. Good morning. Bryant, 2446, please. Uh, do you think it's in good enough condition for him to hear? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. It's in good shape for a first draft. Hello, uh, this is Kern, Jerry Kern. Uh, Mr. Froman was expecting me to call today about an appointment. He, he's leaving for England. Well, but he promised that he was going to listen to my show, oh boy, for his next predict. Say it's today. Oh, all right, thanks. Well, that's it. He's going over to buy himself another English show. Well, he can't. <laughs> no. No, he can't. We worked like dogs on this score, Jim. And I had all my plans made, too. After he bought it, I was going to jump the next boat for England. I'd forgotten about that young lady. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. My passport is still good. Why don't I take the same boat he's taking today? Wonderful. Get him on board ship and he can't get away from you. That's right. Then I can sell him the show. Wonderful. Then I can go and see Eva. Sure, sure. You can get married. 
Well, you yeah, probably have to ask her first. Well, that's an idea. Well, I'll, I'll go and phone the steamship company. Right, I'll go fast. Driver, you think you can make it all right? If we get a break in traffic and the old engine holds out. Oh, Uncle Jerry! Jerry, come on now. We've only got a few minutes. Jerry, if you want to miss that boat, come on here. Charles Froman. It's like watching an era crumble in front of him. The theater's gonna miss him. Yeah. You were very lucky to miss that boat, Jerry. Seen Max around? Oh, hello, Jim. Victor? No, I think he went over to Comstock and Elliott's. What a terrible tragedy. Yes, yes, it's unbelievable. Jerry and I were just talking... Oh, uh, Jerry, you know Victor Herbert, don't you? This is Jerry Kern, Victor. How do you do, Jerry? It's a great honor to meet you, Mr. Herbert. Charlie Froman spoke of you quite often. He had great hopes for you. Mm. Well, he was very kind. He liked you. But more important, he respected you. And it's easy to see why. You've got a song to sing. Thank you, Mr. Herbert. Look down at that city, Jerry. It's made up of millions of people. And music has played a part in all their lives. Lullabies. Love songs. Hymns. Anthems. Must be pretty wonderful, Mr. Herbert, to realize that people you don't even know and never will know are singing your songs, and all of them asking for more than Victor Herbert music. It makes me feel grateful, Jerry. And very humble. One of these days, you'll find out yourself how it feels. What is it my publishers call me? The Dean of American Music. <laughs> well, I think you're going to be the next Dean. One thing I must admit, you've got a better figure for it. Thank you. Keep writing, boy. Don't let anything stop you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Good night, Victor. Good night, Jim. Good evening, Mr. Herbert. Good evening. It's a deal, gentlemen. Congratulations. Comstock and Elliot are going to produce Oh Boy. Max just sent me over with the check. What's the matter? Aren't you fellas happy? Yeah, I am. Thanks. Turn out those lights again, will you? Feels pretty good. If I could just get rid of some of these butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, I've got a little butterfly trouble myself. I suppose you think we're standing in front of the theater on 39th and Broadway. No. What do you take me for? This isn't 39th and Broadway. This is the top of the world. Pretty nice world, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful what a difference seeing your name in life can make, isn't it? Come on, we better go in and we miss the show.
it, Jerry. You're in, my boy. Listen to that applause. That's for you. Don't wake me up. Don't anybody wake me up. <laughs> Are you going to spend your money yet? Well, for one thing, I think I'll buy an interest in harms. For another, you, uh, you might uh, take a little ocean voyage. <laughs> well, good luck. I don't see how she can possibly say no. No, that's what I'm worried about. I'm afraid she is going to say no, Jim. You know, I can't get her out of my mind. She's, well, she's... Yeah, I know. I've been through this before. She's everything you've ever dreamed of on this earth. She's everything I've ever dreamed of in heaven. <laughs> Well, my letters weren't very interesting, Eva, so I tore them up. As a matter of fact, you didn't write very often yourself. A lady doesn't correspond with a gentleman, unless it's a reason other than a personal one. Oh, well, now, doesn't that sound a little silly to you? No, it, it sounds altogether fitting and proper. Oh. You want to fight? A lady doesn't fight. Well, what does a lady do? Oh, you're impossible. Well, you're right. If I were you, I'd have nothing to do with me. In fact, if I were you, when I asked you to marry me, I'd say no. Just on the grounds that a lady never says yes. Now, see here. Are you going to ask me to marry you? Might, with a little encouragement. A lady doesn't... In my she... country, if a lady wants to be asked, she has to be encouraging. In my country... In your country, what in your country? Well, there are, there are proper ways to go about such things in every country. Oh. Well, then, let me put it this way. From the very first moment I saw you, when you walked in from the garden, I knew that out of all the women in the world, I'd finally found the right one, the only one. I wanted to tell you then... I wanted to say, hello, funny face. I don't know your name or anything about you, but I've loved you all my life. You were my first school teacher, my first date, the first girl I ever kissed, and everything in the world to me. You see, I recognized you immediately. You thought all that? That's right. I stood there thinking that, wondering what you'd do if I kissed you. What would you have done? What would you do now? Marry me, Eva. Thank you so much. I'd love to. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Kern. Hello, my darling. They're here, Daddy. They're coming up the steps. Welcome home. Jim! <laughs> what, you old fox, you really did it this time. Nothing, my boy, nothing. Just a little gesture. <laughs> Jim, uh... This is Eva. Hello, Eva. Hello. Well, you've married the nicest guy in this world. But the craziest. Oh, now, wait a minute. Uh, I was keeping that from her. Isn't she sensational, Jim? Jerry! Honey, turn around and let him look at you. Oh, Jerry! <laughs> look at that hair on those eyes. Have you ever seen a woman like that in your life before? Uh, only once. No, I, I hope that both of you have all the happiness in this world. Oh, oh thank, thank you, you Jim. I think we have already. Forgetting me and the music. Oh, Sally, yes, I, I'm sorry, dear. I... Sally. On behalf of my father, Jim Hessler and myself. On behalf of my father, Jim Hessler and myself. I wish to congratulate you on the start of your voyage into the great sea of life. Oh, Sally. <laughs> well, on behalf of my wife and myself, I thank you very much. I'll take you. Hello, Mrs. Hello, Mr. Curry. Sally, it's so wonderful to see you. Why, you have grown up, haven't you? Sally, this is your Aunt Eva. On behalf of my father... Thank you, Sally. We're going to be real good friends, aren't we? Yes, I expect we are. Well, uh, what do you say? Let's, let's all go in and have something to eat, shall we? Oh, Jim, it's so good to be home again. Yes, it was good to be home. I felt I had everything in the world. Happiness, success and the wife I had dreamed about. I wanted to put it all into music. Eva's smile and her eyes. 
and what it meant to be with her. And at last it seemed to me that the clouds had rolled by. First, there was Leave It to Jane. Maybe pot and plant for you. She is the girl with me. I always try to do everything I can for you. No problem. You can wish on her. Give her a string. She'll tackle gaily. A score or more daily. If something is on your mind. And I can see that there is not a doubt of it. Come good, you soon will find. Leave it to me. I will soon get you out of it. If you can start in worrying, kindly refrain. And just. Why don't you tell us how you do it? Yeah, yeah come, come on, Jane, tell us. Oh, but it's really very simple. I just study up on the famous women of history. You mean like Lucretia Borgia? Well, no, not exactly. Listen. In days of old, beside the Nile, a famous queen there dwells. Her clothes were few, but full of style. Her figure slim and spell. On every man that wandered by, she pulled the seat of Everyone observed with awe that her work was swift, but never wrong. I'd be like Cleopatra if I could have my way. Each man she met, she went and kissed, and she dozens on her waiting list. I wish that I had lived there beside the pyramid. For a girl today, don't get the straw back. It simply used to knock them flat when she went like this and then like that. That dancing Cleopatra was always on the spot. She gave those poor Egyptian games something else to watch besides the Sphinx. Mark Antony admitted that what first made him skid was the wibbly wobbly wibbly dance. Oh, oh, you're nervous, Oh, no, 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 no
<laughs> Says the first act was a dream, signed Flo. <laughs> Just wish she's had the second act. Don't worry about the second act. The second act oh, is the first. Know. Thank you, Hazel. Is everything ready for the quick change? Everything's ready in the stage dressing room. All right. Thank you. Hazel, have you got everything? Yes, everything's here. Right, let's go. Good luck, Miss Miller. Thank you. You bet. Oh, here you are, Miss Miller. Everything is ready. Here you are, Miss Miller. I got a nice warm place. I'll put it right here. Yeah, yeah, you got every hand. keep a scrapbook, but it was nice to know that people were singing my songs and asking for more. Night Boat, Good Morning Dearie, The Ziegfeld Follies. Curtains went up, curtains came down, and I think I got to look a little more like a musician. Eva grew lovelier with every passing year. Our life was rich and full and very satisfying. And Jim and I, well, we grew a little grayer, a little more saddened, perhaps. He was still working on his symphony. 
or so he said. But on the whole, the years didn't change as much. However, they certainly did change Sally. She was quite a young lady now. She'd been away at school. In fact, many schools. Well, Sally. Hello. Darling. Well, Sally, I thought you were at school. Well, I, I was. Oh. What happened this time? I just can't stand that school anymore, Uncle Jerry. I've left, and, and I'm not going back. What does your father say about that? Well, he, he hasn't said anything yet. He, he doesn't exactly know. You see, I just left there this morning, and I came right out here to talk to you. Oh, Uncle Jerry, I had to leave. I hated it so much I couldn't eat or sleep or anything. This is the third school you've left now, isn't it, Sally? Yes. Well, now, it seems to me that you ought to be able to make a go of one of them. Oh, I just don't seem to fit in very well. The kids all seem so... Oh, I don't know. All they're interested in are parties and clothes. They seem to think that's all there is to life. Oh, Uncle Jerry, I... I wish you'd talk to Dad for me. He'll, he'll listen to you. Well, Sally, you know your father isn't well. Then I ought to be home where I can take care of him. You ought to be at school completing your education. You want to make something of your life, don't you? Oh, I've had an education, and, and now I want to get down to something serious. Oh, Uncle Jerry, you, you did promise you'd help me get a start in the theater. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I said I'd help you when you were ready. Your father wants you to complete your schooling first, Sally, and he's the boss. Oh, Uncle Jerry, Dad's forgotten what it's like to be young and feel like this, but you haven't. You haven't forgotten what it's like to stand on Broadway and look up at the lights and think, someday I'll see my name up there. You remember that feeling, don't you, Uncle Jerry? Yes, Sally, I've got to admit it, I do. Well, well then that's more important than school or... Or anything else in the world, isn't it? Isn't it, Uncle Jerry? It's the third time, Jerry. Yes, I know. Maybe we shouldn't have made her go back before. After all, if she hates it so much... Oh, Jerry, you can't keep on running away from things all your life. Sally found that out. Well, you can't live another person's life for them either, Jim. It isn't fair. Sally's grown up now, and I think she ought to be allowed to do what she wants to do. I want her to finish her education. And get a chance to finish mine. I, I always said that any kid of mine was going to, to get the right start in life. Well, what's right for one person isn't always right for another, Jim. You know that. Jerry... The trouble with that girl is she's just plain stage struck. She comes by that honestly enough, doesn't she? Remember how we used to pound the sidewalks and knock on doors? Nobody could stop us. Goodness only knows enough people tried to. Remember how thrilled we were when we finally realized we were in? So what right have you or I to interfere with Sally? Yeah. Well, what, what are we going to do, Jerry? I'd give her a part in Sunny. It's all cast. The part of Gwen hasn't been cast yet. Gwen, well, that's, uh, it's only one line. Gwen is going to have a song. The doctor's here, Mr. Hester. Oh, oh, fine, Miss. Uh, doctor, I'll be with you upstairs in just a minute. Good evening, Mr. Kerr. Hello, doctor. You know, when you... Get to be my age, you start collecting pills. Well, I'll, uh... Jerry, I hope that works out all right. How 
you. Very well, Miss Miller, and you? Bye. Hello, Oscar. Jerry. This is a charming number. I was just telling Jerry how much I liked it. What a fine lyric you've written. Oh, thanks. Uh, Jerry, I've just been talking to Mr. Dillingham, and he thinks that Who should be a big production number instead of a solo, and that, of course, Marilyn ought to sing it. Oh. Well, then, of course, we'll have to do it. It uh, puts me in rather a tough position, though, Oscar. After all, I did write it for Sally. I know you did, Jerry, but we'll give Sally something else. Oh, she's going to be awfully disappointed. It's a wonderful song, and I'd love to sing it, but I hate to take it away from her. Well, it's for the good of the show, Marilyn. I think you're right, Oscar. Have you thought, though, how you're going to tell Sally? It's not going to be easy. Oh, I thought you should tell her, Jerry. Oh, I was afraid you would. Well, after all, you know her so well, it shouldn't be too difficult. Well, it would be a lot easier if I didn't know her so well. well would you like me to tell her? I'm sure she'll understand. Would you do that, Marilyn? Certainly. Ask her to meet me in my dressing room. And don't worry. Thank you, darling. But Uncle Jerry wrote that song for me. I know. And I know how disappointed you must be, too. But, Sally, disappointments are part of the theater, and you've got to be able to take them. Well, the very same thing happened to me in my first show. I had to give up my song to the star. And I think I felt pretty much as you're feeling right now. Then I think it's a pretty low, miserable trick for you to pull on someone else. Sally, listen to me a minute. This is your first show. You're just starting. And there are going to be a good many songs and a good many shows for you. It may be difficult for you to understand now, but one day you'll realize you've got to give and take, whether you like it or not. I'll never take a song away from anyone else, especially if it's their first real chance. Oh, Sally, please don't put this on a personal basis. I don't want to take the song away from you. Then why are you doing it? Mr. Dillingham thinks it's best for the show. And what's best for the show is more important than what I want or you want or any personal feelings involved. Don't you see that, Sally? Yes, I see it all right. You're trying to take my song away from me, and you aren't going to get away with it. Uncle Jerry wrote that song for me, and I'm going to sing it. I don't care whether you are the star. You're not going to take it away from me. Sally! <laughs> she can't have my song, Uncle Jerry. Don't let her talk you into it. I don't care what happens, she can't have my song. I'm sorry, Jerry. What is it, Sally? Am I still in the show, Uncle Jerry? If you want to be, you won't have a song, though. He took my song away from me, the song you wrote for me. Sally, there's a little thing called the good of the show. Apparently, the show didn't seem very important to you this afternoon. Not important? You didn't care what happened to the show just so long as you got your way. It doesn't work that way, Sally. Nothing works that way. I learned something today. I suddenly realized that you're not ready for the theater yet. Not ready? No. All you have to offer is a small town, a great deal of conceit, in return for which you want success. you anymore if you were my own child. But I must say this to you. You're not going to get anywhere in this life by using people. And until you realize that, you're not going to have the respect of anyone. Sally, I... I'm ashamed of you.
Upstairs in Mr. Hessler's room. It's his heart. I wouldn't stay very long. Mr. Hessler could use a little rest. Well, good evening, Jim. Oh, Jerry. We missed you at the theater tonight. Sally's gone, Jerry. Yes, I know. Mrs. Muller told me. I... She didn't come down for dinner, and so... Went up to her room. Oh, 
Dear Daddy, I'm going out on my own. Don't worry about me. Someday you'll be proud of me. I'll always love you. P.S. Tell Uncle Jerry I still love him. It's all my fault, Jim. I shouldn't have suggested that she'd be in the show. No, 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 Jerry. Sally is Sally. It's time both of us faced that. Yes, I know, but I think I heard her. Well, she's got spunk, all right, then. Jerry, she's young. She's she's way too young to be out on her own. Well, now, look, Jim, don't you worry about this. I'll bring her back. I wish you'd do that. I promise you I'll try my utmost. Yeah, just as soon as you can. Good night, Jim. Uh, why don't you get back into bed and get some rest? Yeah. yeah. I left no stone unturned trying to find Sally. Personal ads, private detectives. But the answer was always the same. No one had seen her. It was a futile hunt. I tried to keep Jim's hopes alive, but... I think he knew. And then, one night. Please don't mention that I telephoned. I think, Mr. Kerr, you'd better go up right away. He's been asking for you. Directly, but I've got a couple of very good leads. I've got a hunch they won't be very long now. Then I'm going to see to one thing, Mr. Hessler. You're going to finish that symphony. I've kept you from that too long now. Oh, I forgot about that symphony. Forgot about it years ago. Well, what about your notes? I never made any notes. I was just posing as usual. You are a genius, Jim. And you with your wheezy little tunes. You were writing the real music. The, the folk music of America. Thanks, Jerry, for letting me kind of stick around. No, wait a minute. Let's get something straight, Jim. I didn't let you hang around. If it hadn't been for you and your faith in me, I would have quit half a dozen times, you know that. And if we're going to start handing out bouquets, I just want you to know that I don't know where to begin to thank you. You're a great man, Jerry. It's been a privilege. Getting in on that music. It's been a lot of fun. Now, let's not talk that way, Jim. In a couple of weeks, you'll be back at that piano, screaming for more and more brass. Ah, uh, Jerry. This looks like the time for strings. Jerry, 
if uh, I... I want you to look after Sally for me. <clears throat> Jim, you're going to be all right. So is Sally. I, in a couple of weeks, why, we'll be laughing about this. Close the door when he. I was completely lost, completely helpless. Jim was gone, and I had failed him, was still failing him. I had lost a world with. Jim's passing, and everywhere I walked, I walked with ghosts. Reliving lost hours, pacing a world of memories. I couldn't even think in terms of music. I began to feel that I might never write again. How long has this been going on? For weeks, Oscar. Ever since Jim died, he's a score to write me. He hasn't done one song. Well, that certainly doesn't sound like Jerry. He seems to have completely lost heart. Have you had any word of Sally? No, but he has every friend he ever had in show business looking. Well, don't worry about it. He'll turn up. It's Jerry I'm worried most about. You know, Oscar, I believe he's beginning to think he... He can't write music anymore. It's heartbreaking to watch him. Well, I, uh, I have a book here I'd like him to take a look at. I've been commissioned to adapt it and write the lyrics, and I think Jerry's the man to do the music. I don't think he'll do it, Oscar. Well, that's hard to believe. There's never been a time as long as I've known Jerry when you couldn't excite him with a good story. There's never been a time in his life like that. But you can try, and I'll tell him you're here. Hello. How's it going, dear? Oh, fine, darling, fine. I was just tinkering a little bit with the melody, but it's going to be all right. Of course it is. Aye, it is raining, isn't it? Jerry, Oscar Hammerstein's here. Oscar? Oh, darling, why didn't you tell me? Oscar, come in. Hello, Gary. Oh, goodness, it's good to see you. Won't you sit down? Sit down. Thanks, Jerry. Well, what's, um, what's new? I'll tell you what brought me out here, Jerry. I came across a novel that I think's going to make a great show. Now, if you'll do the music, I'd like to do the book. Oscar, I, uh, I'd love to. I really would. But, um, I have so many commitments right now that I don't think it... I wouldn't be fair to you or anyone concerned. Suppose I leave the book with you and you glance through it when you have time. Oh, it's no use, Oscar. Well, I'll leave it anyhow. See you next week. Won't you stay for dinner? I'd certainly like to, but I have to get back to town. Bye, Eve. I'll see you to the door, Oscar. Bye. Bye.
Hello? This is Mrs. Curry. Oh, just a moment, Mr. Kelly. Jerry, it's Arthur Kelly. He's got news of Sally. Hello, Arthur. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, in Memphis? Uh, what was the name of that club again? Club Elite, all this week. Yes, well, I get right on it. Thank you very much, Arthur. Sally is singing at the Club Elite in Memphis all this week. Oh, that's wonderful. Shall I pack a bag for you? Yes, darling, you do that and I'll call me Chris.
Sally. Uncle Jerry. Oh, Uncle Jerry, I'm so glad to see you. What are you doing here? Well, I, uh, I was out front watching the show. Did you see what we did to your number? Yes. Oh, I bet you liked the show. Man. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I liked it. I wish that some of the people who think my music is highbrow could have seen it. <laughs> oh, I, I'm so excited. I, I don't know what to do. You look wonderful, Uncle Jerry. More handsome than ever. How's Aunt Eva? Oh, she's fine. But of course, she misses you. Oh, I, I miss her, too. I miss you both. Is she with you? You haven't told me yet what you're doing here. No, your Aunt Eva's in New York. And I'm here because somebody told me I could find you here. I've been looking for you for a long time now, Sally. Oh, Uncle Jerry, you shouldn't have bothered. I'm all right. Oh, I'm sure you are, but I promised your father I'd look after you. Sally, I want you to come back to New York with me. Oh, I can't, Uncle Jerry. I'd, I'd like to, but I can't. When I, when I heard about my father, I, I never realized he was so ill, Uncle Jerry. You know I never would have left him. I know that, Sally. When I, when I heard about him, it was as though someone had forced me to look into the mirror for the first time. I loved him very much, and I knew I'd broken his heart. I was spoiled and selfish, and I knew that I I could never have any respect for myself again unless I did what I said I was going to do. So you see, I can't go back right now. I'm making my own way now, and I'm pretty good at it, too. <laughs> well, Sally, I, I just don't like the idea of your being here and all alone. This is just a stepping stone from where I've been to where I hope I'm going. I'm making $50 a week now because management thinks I'm worth $50. If I'm worth more, I'll get more. And if not, I'll have to find it out for myself. And Uncle Jerry, I'm not using anyone. Five minutes, Miss Vessel. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, Sally, you know, darling, I'd give anything in the world if you'd let me help you. But I must say that I've never been quite so proud of anyone in my life as I am of you at this moment. Gradually, I felt the old heartache misting away, and I was at peace. The promise I had made Jim had been fulfilled. Sally was going to be all right. I uh, walked along the river that night, with a river wind in my face and the taste of it on my lips. And I stood there listening. A sudden excitement thrilling for me, listening to the song of a river that makes its way right through the heart of America. And the voice of that river was the laughter, and the tears, and the joys, and the sorrows, and the hopes of all America's people. Well, Joe, that's my story. It's too bad Mr. Hessler couldn't have been there tonight, Mr. Kane. Oh, he was there, Joe. He'll always be a part of any music I ever write. Whatever happened to Miss Sally? Well, I don't know exactly. She's on her own now. Maybe I'm just getting tired or something, but ever since Jim's been gone, I, I feel like everything is sort of ending for me. Maybe my music is ending too, Joe. Ending? After that show tonight? Hey, hey, I gotta get you back to the Waldorf. You got some vows to take. No, sir, Mr. Kane. Your music ain't ending for you. In my opinion, it's just the beginning. She didn't say
go. She wasn't so sure that he'd be good. She wasn't even sure that she'd be good. So what did she do? I leave it to you. She did just what you do. Sit down, Mr. Curry. Oh, you're sure we won't be in the way? Oh, certainly not. Not at all. Well, I can't get over this, Mr. Arntzeed. We certainly don't grow stages like this on Broadway. <laughs> Darling, look at the size of that orchestra. Why, you have everything in the world to work with here. That's right, Mr. Curran. We've tried to give you the best of everything. Yes, uh, that's so. Uh, what was the number you were going to do today? Well, we found an old song of yours that you did first in 1917 called The Land where good songs go. Oh, I'd almost forgotten about that one. We're using it as a frame for some of your other songs. Uh -huh. uh, what star is going to sing this? Well, well, Mr. Kern, as a matter of fact, we're trying out a newcomer. Oh, a newcomer. This girl did a test for us in New York. I mean, it impressed us, so we flew her out here. She hasn't done much yet, but we have great hopes for her. Quiet! All right, girls. We're ready. ready. Ready for a take. All right, let's try one. Blazes, please. Okay, Charlie. Hit the light! Quiet! Okay, roll them. Action!
It's a land of flowers and April showers with sunshine in her sing one of my songs than anyone else in the world.
what am I giving? Why do I want the things I dare not hope for? What can I hope for? I wish I knew. Must know something, but he don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling. He keeps on rolling along. He don't plant taters, and he don't. And then what plants them is soon forgotten. But old man river just keeps rolling along. You and me, we sweat and strain, bodies all aching and. Coat that bar, lift that veil, you get a little drunk, and you land in jail. I get weary. So sick of trying. I'm tired of living, but I'm feeling. 